Sazatou is brought to you by Maine Spirits. Learn more about the delicious spirits they import into the great state of Maine and the cocktails you can make with them at mainespirits.com or by downloading their app for your smartphone or visiting them on Instagram at Maine underscore spirits. Promotional consideration by State Theatre Portland. Visit statetheaterportland.com for an up-to-date schedule of virtual events and upcoming announcements as we get closer to normalcy. And Sun Tiki Studios, a top-notch rehearsal and performance facility located on Forest Avenue in Portland, Maine. Learn more at suntikistudios.com. So now we're making videos of this as well. You can go onto Main Spirits YouTube page and check these videos out. This is Happy Hour brought to you by Main Spirits. And this week, Megan called in with Fernet Branca. And wow, that's kind of a difficult liqueur to get into a drink. But damned if I didn't find one, I found one. And I showed her how to make it on the video, which you can watch on the Main Spirits YouTube page, like I just said. But now I'll tell you here how to make it as well as she if she's listening right now fernet is a digestive if you have it you eat a bunch of food and you drink you know sip on the fernet suddenly you are not gratuitously stuffed anymore for some reason it's made out of european magic i think so uh it has a bold herbaceous flavor it's a big big thing and so finding something for it to stand up in or will stand up to it um, is a little bit difficult, but I found this drink called the Toronto and I'm going to show you how to make it now in a shaker full of ice, add two ounces of Rittenhouse rye, which is 100 proof, which is why it stands up three quarters of an ounce of Fernet, one quarter ounce of simple syrup and a dash of orange bitters, stir until cold and strain into a coupe glass. Now look at that thing. It's dark. It's like leather. Take a sip. It's going to be like leather. Let's see how it goes. Wava vuvu. That is some diesel tasty stuff. Now, keep in mind, this is a very strong drink. Fernet is strong, and the uh, the 100 proof rye is strong. So just, you know, make sure you're being mindful of how much of it you're taking in. But it is a, uh, it is a bold, bold drink. A very nice uh, sip and whiskey drink that I recommend. This has been Happy Hour, brought to you by Maine Spirits. You can learn more about this drink and many other drinks at mainspirits.com. You can download their app for your smartphone. You can follow them on Instagram at main underscore spirits, or you can follow them on YouTube now and watch these videos. And as always, we implore you to drink deliciously and responsibly. I waited for it. So there have been... Uh, I've seen at least four of my close personal friends who have acquired animals during mm. the pandemic. And uh, actually, my wife and I are on that list as well. We adopted a rabbit during the pandemic, but um, at least four of my friends got dogs. Well, and, I know. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go on. Oh, no, 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 please. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, I've, I've been riding out the pandemic at my parents' house, and my parents have always owned dogs, and uh, being able to hang out with the dog every day has definitely been a, a lifesaver for me. Mm. <laughs> so. mm. Yeah, I yeah, think that totally. a lot of people are, are saying that like the animals were almost therapeutic for them through all of this, trapped at home, and so having an animal has been great. Definitely. The, yeah, the dog gets little... all of the hugs that all of the people are <laughs> yes. not getting at this That's point. Right. For sure, yeah. yeah. So everyone's, a little, little, everyone's a little COVID baby <laughs> yeah. that they had. Uh, so we are joined, you are, you are, if you are hearing uh, voices that aren't Zach's and mine, you're, you're not going crazy, it's true. We have we, we're today. both very good at ventriloquism. That's yes. what we've taken up over the week, and we're throwing our voices. Yeah, I've got a little Charlie McCarthy doll on my lap right now. <laughs> yeah. um, Mine's just on the other side of the room staring at me, freaking me out. Yep. I, found a, uh, I found a collection of, uh, uh, oh crap, I almost had it, uh, Candace Bergen's dad. Charlie McCarthy's whatever. I was gonna say I found some instructional VHS tapes at Goodwill. I've been watching them, and I'm actually doing pretty well with the ventriloquism. <laughs> or we have two guests today joining us from <clears throat> get this zippy little title, get this zippy little name, 
for the business. It's the Veterinary and Rehab Center of Cape Elizabeth. See, that's yeah. not that bad. No, not that bad. It, no. Well, and we're joined, it we're joined by Ginger. It tells you where it is and what you do. So there you go. That's right. We know exactly what it is. It's <laughs> not like no one's, no one's wheeling into your spot looking for a gas grill. <laughs> <laughs> But you'd be surprised with veterinary and veteran. I mean, I'm sure Robin can tell you about lots of times she's gotten calls and then, you know, veteran rehab. I mean, you know, we do get confused for other things. I I believe it. Yeah. Um, So we're joined by Ginger Brown Johnson, who is the head sturgeon. No, surgeon. Okay. And uh, owner (laughs) of of the uh, center. And Robin Elliott, who's the community outreach and education uh, coordinator at the facility, but also... Um, like any good uh, Mainer and any good small <laughs> business, everyone probably wears a zillion different hats. For sure. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for thank thanks you. For being here. It was my thinking that uh, you know, where so many people are getting pets and have pets, and uh, I've always had pets. I, I grew up with dogs. Uh, I currently have a 14-year-old lab mix named Pete the Dog. AKA Krusty Pete, AKA Pizza Pizza. <laughs> uh, and uh, my wife came with a now seven year old Lab Beagle Sharpe, Rhodesian Ridgeback, and wow. Groundhog mix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her name is uh, Cody, and now Cody. Uh, renamed uh, Tubi, is in Rude Tube, Tube the Dog. <laughs> nice. I kind of let pets name. You start with a name and you, it just evolves over time, mm-hmm. right? And I know that I've always been interested in making sure you know the pets are healthy and you can really properly care for them. And I toured for Zach and I toured together for many years, so I, a, a pet for me was off the table for a long time. But now that uh, mm. I'm elderly and uh, retired <laughs> at the musicians' retirement camp. Uh, I can have a dog. You're a regular uh, Dr. Doolittle at this point. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, I will say I was confused just because like, I am an aging musician, and I saw that it was a rehab center of Cape Elizabeth. I, I have to apologize. I thought it was a different kind of rehab. <laughs> Too fun? Too soon? Too soon. Okay, <laughs> moving on. JK. Uh, so, yeah, so a lot of people have have the pets, and uh, I wanted to open up a discussion about uh, properly caring for them and making sure that we can all be good pet parents. And I'll turn the table over to you. I th- that sounded like Ginger that's going to speak, right? Yeah, no, thanks for having us. I, we certainly have seen so many new uh, pandemic pets, and uh, I think they have been, you know, the constant that has gotten us through this this unprecedented unprecedented year. Or so. Um, mm-hmm happy to do what we can to um, give any information that helps uh, have them uh, be successful in their new families. So have you been uh, busier over at the shop? Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. You'll see. Um, and we've had to you know, talk to a lot of our long-term clients about this, um, you know, wait times, not just at our practice, but across veterinary medicine have gotten much longer where we were used to getting people in um, day of next day, you know, now mm-hmm. we're looking next week, next month. And, and that's all because of this, um, pandemic pets for sure. Wouldn't you say mm. Robin? Absolutely. And, you know, recently, um, I would say over the last probably 10 years, we've just had people have just been rescuing. So mm. we rarely saw puppies or kittens. Um, we rarely were doing spays or neuters and yeah. now all of a sudden, just dozens and dozens of puppies and kittens and spays and neuters and it's an interesting change wow it's so true. people are i mean i know that it's kind of hard to adopt a dog right now because they're in such high demand yeah um, we've had people who call and you know how, how can i find one <laughs> right right but yeah. you're saying you're getting a lot of uh, spays and neuters in which means that uh someone's someone's making new dogs out there Mm. Where yeah, are those coming of, from generally? So there, we our clientele usually we see people who are finding reputable breeders. I think in Maine, especially, people realize to avoid puppy mills and mm-hmm. kitten mills, things like that. So people are taking their time finding a breeder, and then they wait months before they <laughs> can get a puppy or kitten. Um, so I, that's. In our particular practice, that's the bulk of what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And it's, it's such a fascinating change because it did for years now um, in New England. It's just been people have adopted older pets to mm-hmm. rescue them. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. I've always had uh, adoptions myself. That's great. Uh-huh. Yeah, me too. Since I left my folks, my folks would get... So I kind of come from... I'm 45, so I'm from... I, I kind of bridge a generation gap, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we had golden retrievers. They were great dogs, no doubt, but they were definitely like overbred. Yeah. Um, had like the bad hips. And also, it wasn't until I had my own pets that I kind of looked into the food that we feed dogs. Mm-hmm. So the the dogs that we had with my folks, they you know, they didn't die like super young, but you know, Pete's 14 going strong and i can't help but think a lot of that has to do with his diet yeah but you said pete was a, a mixed breed too right also yes yeah so you know like you said um, genetics being involved in um and the fact of overbreeding you know or just narrowing the gene pool i mean in general mm-hmm. we see mixed breed pets living longer than purebred mm-hmm. ones we're looking at you england but you're you're absolutely right that nutrition um sure plays a huge role in health and you can tell the difference in a pet that's had good food uh, Mm -hmm. most of its life and a pet that hasn't Mm -hmm. and the other thing is that they have done so much research now with pet nutrition and they have all kinds of ways to help pets that have like renal failure or heart disease or Mm. thyroid disease i mean there's food out there for everything to extend their life right now so they've come a long way tufts has a wonderful site that i refer a lot of people to called pet foodology because there's a lot of nutrition information out there that's being um, generated by the food companies and not necessarily by um, the food scientists Um, so um, that's a really nice site that i like that keeps us on you know a a proven path (laughs) right Right. Um, yeah, we're feeding uh, our dogs a white fish and sweet potato. Seems to work for them. Great. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I think that there's like a happy medium maybe somewhere in between the, you know, the big bag of old Roy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, there's a, I'll, 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 I won't mention the name of the company in case that you're tied to them professionally, <laughs> but I will say that I don't appreciate that they refer to themselves as the, quote, thinking person's pet food. Oh, no. <laughs> like, yeah, rude. Well, I think a lot of people do assume that, you know, veterinarians are tied to food companies, but, you know, I would, I would dispel that Absolutely. rumor. You know, we, we're oh, not really? tied to any, any food yeah. at all. Yeah. They're not, they're not taking you out for... Uh, you know, steak dinners so that you'll... Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always that suspicion, I feel like, in, in most medical professions when the doctor prescribes something and you're like, wait a minute, this is probably... They're just getting a cut of this. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I've I've seen that kind of wooing. My father was a pediatric surgeon and, and he got a lot of wooing, but in the veterinary profession, not so much, so... It's <laughs> weird. You yeah. think they were... You think that they're leaving me not... Maybe at my, Jones... Side hustle. <laughs> Is that our business? <laughs> we'll start start working the pet products. They definitely go to vet schools, you know, the the bigger companies. Um, but you know, to follow you into practice, I I don't I don't see that too much. Hmm. And I just googled that when you mentioned that we won't mention the name of, and we absolutely have nothing to do. With that. <laughs> like, how rude is that? <laughs> just insulting to everybody that doesn't use it. Yeah, the thinking person's dog food. Oh, I bought. That's crazy. I didn't buy that. I must be an idiot. <laughs> the Thanks other thing I find with food, you know, and I, I would just like to reassure everyone that the most expensive product is not necessarily the best for your pet. I see people trying to do the best by their pet and spending so much money on food and sometimes that's not the right food for their pet so you know i would definitely go to your vet and talk to them um versus just assume that cost is equaling um you know value i mean this is true for so many things right Mm -hmm. um i mean there's a luxury brand for everything Mm -hmm. yeah right um one thing we've been feeding our dogs a lot of is vegetables nice and uh my wife actually created this culture of the dogs hanging around for uh, like food prep, yes, and, and and not to you know not to encourage begging or yeah. anything like that, but um, 
you know, carrots, you know, not too many because they're sugary, but um, a lot of kale, yeah. <laughs> a lot of lettuces, yeah. like they, they yep. love it. To That's which great. point uh, she's also a, a pretty avid gardener and we have a, a raised bed situation in our yard. And uh, last year I I watched Pete the dog. I mean, he did, once he started, he didn't stop. He kind of just <laughs> decided to, he'd walk around the yard and kind of graze a little, just to go yeah. nibble, on, <laughs> nibble on some kale. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and I have to think of I, I have to think that yeah, both being a mixed breed rather than a purebred, but then also the you know the the diet really has I don't know he he has aged f- certainly um, you know has a gray beard and he's getting some gray whiskers and stuff and you know he's kind of come into some some hip problems because of uh, uh, Lyme's disease and hmm. um, but we're managing that as well. <clears throat> But uh, he looks great. Like he he still has a, you know, aside from like his hips are kind of slowing down a little bit. You know, yeah. Um, they can't quite keep up with the rest of him, because yeah. from the hips forward, he's ready to go. Uh, my parents That's have great. a mixed breed dog named Addie, uh, also yeah. Lab. Looks a lot like Pete, actually. Yeah. Um, but I tried to feed her some lettuce today, and she, she spit it right out. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <So much. laughs> yeah. well, loves carrots, know, the... but not lettuce so much. <laughs> did you give her a dress? Uh, did you? Uh, sorry to uh, pry, but did you offer a dressing of any kind? <laughs> Thousand Island. Yeah, but it wasn't the brand she likes. So it, was the, it was the cheaper uh, brand. Yeah. So oh, you, you you're trying to throw some wishbone on her? Yeah, she's like, nah. She's got the expensive tastes. <laughs> yeah. Nah, dude. <laughs> We're going to need Newman's own minimum. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the marketing from um, Nutrition for Pets, you know, tries to make us think of dogs as um, carnivores exclusively. But really, that's the cats, you know, not the dogs. They are um, omnivores like us. So all these things you're talking about are, are wonderful for them and offer so much nutrition. And if you are, you know... Um, giving it in addition to a complete and balanced pet food, you know, it's adding very few calories, but it's adding a lot of, you know, extra uh, vitamins, minerals. So um, I'm That's better than that. you having said uh, kale's poison. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, no. I, 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 one thing I love about like a Google search is you can just, if you type in our onions, it autofills poisonous <laughs> for dogs. Like everyone, right. like, I feel like all of us are kind of going through that should they eat this should they not eat that and yeah. like what you know what's poisonous for them and what's not and then in what quantities and then you know mm-hmm. being being obviously mindful and careful but also not being like a helicopter parent and freaking out if they have a little piece of onion off the floor right yeah 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 a little bit of both <laughs> a little bit of both it's it's hard uh, it, because like pete pete being a lab will will eat everything mm-hmm. if you leave it out like it, i have kind of a a standing rule, you know, for me in our house, like if if Pete eats something that's out, that's my that's my fault because I left it out. Mm-hmm. He will just he just wants to do it, yeah, because he's yeah. just food crazy. He lo- he just loves to eat all the time. Uh, in fact, uh, early on in our relationship, I had uh, made a roasted chicken dinner, full full chicken, big one too, big sucker, and uh, and. The, the adult humans finished and I was walking our guests out to the car and I, by the time I came back, like, just walking people out, like, hey, bye-bye, came back up and he had <laughs> devoured all of it. Oh, no. Bones, I know, and that's that's not good, you know, and so no. that was a that was a long 72 hours with him. Exactly. Just like every time he moved a muscle, I'm like, <gasps> you know, yeah. is this yeah, it? Scary. So that, that's terrifying and I've also had moments uh in before times with a roommate who you know they just weren't thinking like i'm thinking you know because they're not the parent of the pet Mm -hmm. but they had left a bottle of advil oh um right and (laughs) we came home and it it was open and i'm like well how much was it used like yeah Mm -hmm. like how like there's just no way to to determine which of the dogs Mm. ate or did not eat Advil, and if so, how much? There's like you know two variables per pet, and so mm-hmm. that was that was an expensive uh, trip over oh to the emergency God, vet. Yeah. That's a scary one, the Advil yeah. especially. So everyone should have you know a- animal poison controls number, the ASPCA, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, on their fridge because yes, labs will get into anything, mm-hmm. um, and and that's a really good number to have. A lot of people call their vet, which is perfect. I'm really glad they do, but um, the 
ASPCA animal poison control, those are just toxicologists. So those are veterinary experts in poison. Um, mm -hmm. So often, even if you call your vet, if we don't know right away, we're going to call them. So, you know, having that number available too is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, well, I, and I do actually have it there on, you go. right there on the fridge. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, I have a, a three-part question. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, like first is, are you finding a lot of the pandemic uh, pet owners are first-time pet owners? And if so, uh, or I guess just in general, what are a lot of, lot of common mistakes that first-time pet owners make? And what would you offer to them for advice? Great questions. You want to start with those, Robin? Or sure, yeah. So um, we are seeing a surprising number of people who are first-time pet owners, and they'll call and they don't know anything. Um, and so I would say that probably the number one problem they run into is training. They don't know anything about training, mm -hmm. um, and it's so critical, especially with dogs, especially if you have children to work with a trainer. We have awesome puppy classes. Every vet out there does. And um, you really can raise a rock star if you start them as puppies. Yeah. And um, that can save you from biting problems down the road and house training problems and all kinds of things. So I would say that that is probably the number one thing. And then the second issue that people are running into right now is that some of these breeds, like all the doodle mixes, um, need grooming about monthly mm. grooming and it is really hard to find a groomer right now because mm -hmm. there are so many more pets so. hmm. Those are good uh, now they they need they need the grooming or they have to have the grooming if you want them to look like best in show so <laughs> so doodles need the grooming anything that's mixed with a poodle and i'm sure you've heard of all of those like the labradoodles and the golden doodles and yeah they're like hypoallergenic dogs right right but they have a type of coat that will just mat and cause them all kinds of you know skin infections and everything if it's not groomed it hmm. constantly grows it never stops growing um, and so i think that people don't anticipate things like that when they get one of these breeds hmm. so yeah they are not it's not an option not to groom them are there any other uh, common things like that that people forget to consider when, when getting pets? Uh, like for From the veterinary perspective, I don't think a lot of people know that, um, you know, we have such a variety in the size of our pets and that medications are direct, the cost of medications is directly related to the size of the pet you get. So, mm -hmm. you know, people come in with St. Bernard's and then they're surprised at how much their regular heartworm and flea and tick prevention costs, you know. I, mm -hmm. And I'm sure they don't realize that if they had a Yorkie, it would be that much less. Yeah. And know? larger pets generally have more health problems, right? Uh, uh, if, if, it depends what, what part of the body I would say you're talking about. Because mm -hmm. we talk about small dogs and, and teeth is a huge issue. And mm -hmm. large dogs, usually their teeth are fine. So mm -hmm. it but it's depends. Their hips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Hips, right. yeah. 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 My, uh, my parents had a, uh, a Great White Pyrenees for a while. And uh, I think they... They learned how expensive. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, it surprises us sometimes for, too. You know, if we don't have one at home. Like, oh my gosh! You know, a hundred twenty pound dog. Yeah. That, not this just is, food costs, but a lot of things. Add she's up a there. great dog, though. Great dog for hugging. Oh, they are <laughs> yeah. for sure. So that that's a question that I had. That w when I got Pete the dog, I was just kind of coming into the realization of. I don't know, just because I was young, I guess, and I'd always, like, come up with dogs, so there's always this part of it that my parents were kind of taking care of, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was just in the feeding, petting, playing with department, you know, raising, yep. training. I, I was, you know, a big part of that, too. But when you have a dog, I get this all the time. I, I, I get, and I'm sure this happens with everybody, you get the... Oh, and then, you know, like my wife like passes me her phone, like, and it's just like this adorable dog that's up for adoption. I just, <laughs> and, and like, I'm not one to go to, uh, you know, just go to the uh, adoption center just to look. Cause it's like, yeah. I know that, I know that we can't, we can't have another dog right now yeah. because, and she knows this too. Like, it's not, we're on the, we're on the same page here, but it's just like, I almost don't want to look because it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, you know, because you want the you know, like. Yes. yes, of course, I'd love that dog, and every dog you're going to show me a picture of. Also, <laughs> yeah. I'll take that dog. But the the fiscal responsibility of yeah. seeing a dog through 
not just dog food, but the, the end years and, and being able to be there for them. That's so wise to think of that. Um, you know, people are very surprised these days with veterinary costs quite often because we're able to offer so much um, care similar to what's offered in human medicine, but we don't have, in most cases, the insurance to pay for it. So directly out of pocket, it's, it's shocking for anyone. Right. Well, there is like pet insurance now, isn't there? There is, and it it's working really great, but it does seem that people need to get it when they first get the pet. Um, otherwise, you have pre-existing conditions that they don't cover. <laughs> they haven't worked that out, the uh, the pet insurance arena yet? <laughs> right. <laughs> and a uh, second follow-up question to that, uh, if you do get that insurance, does it cover elective surgeries for dogs? Like, you know, uh, Breast eye implants. jobs, tummy tucks. Oh, yeah, exactly. The implant. <laughs> Ca- calf implants. <laughs> I think you have to get the um, Los, Los Angeles version of it. Because <laughs> yeah. our whole family has got a lot of work done. And uh, we just, we want, no, just <laughs> we want we want the dog to look good, too. A lot of these, you know, larger dogs are like clumber spaniels, that sort of thing. You've probably seen the ones with the really, really droopy eyes, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes, you know, a, a facelift to help those could be covered because it could be medically necessary. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about no. just no. sheer, <laughs> sheer, like <laughs> the sheer cosmetic. Like, I, I, want, I want every member of the family, including the pets, to look like late era Wayne Newton. <laughs> well, that's a special insurance right there. <laughs> Another side hustle, Jones. That's right. <laughs> I didn't realize that we were going to uh, be ma- we're, we're, we're making bank here. <laughs> that's right. All million there any, dollar ideas. Are there, yeah. Are there any available properties adjacent to yours anywhere near yours that we could like <laughs> yeah. offer all these uh, uh, off brand secondhand pet uh <laughs> services <laughs> with all these new pets it's opening up a whole new world that's right that's right <laughs> clothing um, unnecessary clothing anyway go on. i think Jones? with, with uh life with these unprecedented times about to turn back into precedented times right. um, i think uh, there, i'm sure there's a lot of pets that are used to like round the clock attention that are yeah. going to now have to deal with their their owners going back to work or doing stuff like that is there yeah. uh I don't know. What, what would you say to that situation for, for pet owners? Yeah, I think it's going to take a lot of adjustment for all of us. And, um, you know, I think animals in general, including human ones, are creatures of habit. And uh, so, you know, changing these habits is, is not going to be easy. And the important thing is to do it slowly, um, if we can, when we're anticipating things and, and with a lot of um, positive, we call it positive reinforcement or just, you know, encouragement. Um, you know, if if you change things overnight, that's that's going to be difficult. Mm-hmm. I yeah, mean, some uh, sometimes people aren't going to have a choice. Yeah. Per se. If you know you're going back to work, you know, most people have an idea of when that might happen. So if you can, um, you know, or when they have to start working outside the home again, um, you know, start to spend some more time away from your pet. Um, start to investigate. Um, busy toys, we might call them, um, that would occupy their time um, mm-hmm. when you're not there. So they get used to these things. So like uh, video games and uh, yeah. Yeah, get, yeah, maybe get them started on like The Handmaid's Tale or something. <laughs> <laughs> binge, binge watching television series. Right. I mean, they could do you... the, the Marvel movies in order. I mean, that's that's a lot of, that's a lot of hours. <laughs> that gives you a lot of time. Yeah. But so if you, you just oh, played, sorry. you know, one of those the first time you leave then they're not going to like that movie at all but if you you know start to play it while you're there and then keep it on while you leave then interesting so there are these toys are like um they have puzzle toys that the dogs bat around and every once in a while a piece of food falls out of it and so something like that really occupies their brain because we all know dogs are totally focused on food. Mm -hmm. So uh, things like that, you know, there are options like that available. And we also work with a wonderful trainer, um, Nancy Friedman Smith, who owns Good Dogs Training. And she has been helping people get their dogs ready for when they have to go back to work. So it's a good idea if you have a dog that you got during the pandemic to track down a trainer and um, have them sort of help you make that transition. Mm -hmm. Wean them off the the 24-7 right. attention train? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've noticed no, uh, since being home that 
uh, the the dog has me trained at this point. <laughs> right. But like I used to give my parents a hard time for like if they just gave her a treat or something like that without like I was like at least make her sit and you know waggle her paw or something like that. And uh, <laughs> Wag- now waggle uh, her waggle. Paw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a well you know it's a combination of the tail wag and the, the <laughs> it's, it's a real thing. Look it up. Technically, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm on it. So I'm, so it's probably above your head a little bit, Spence. But yeah, I wouldn't get it. <laughs> Bear with me. Here. I wouldn't get it. Yeah. Oh, that's like, is that is that the thinking person's pet trick? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at, at this point, like, she just like comes over and like gives me the eyes. I'm just like, okay, fine. Any, whatever you want. Anything. You got it. Aww, like, happy <laughs> dog eyes. Yeah, it's, it's a real thing. And it's like, it's <laughs> hypnotizing for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. think that the real issue is going to be when the humans have to go back to work and have to survive their day without a dog mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> we also wonder how much uh, i think we've seen a lot of these companies learning that maybe they don't have to have the huge place downtown pay that huge rent in order yeah. to have their company function mm-hmm. um but i mean that's yeah. a different show but <laughs> but, I, but i have heard that a lot of companies are um finding that they think that more people are going to be working from home um, after we've learned how to do it so sure I mean, it avoids. A, I mean, well, it would make it would it would make a, a show like The Office seem irrelevant over time. <laughs> um, like what? What's an office? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. And why does Grandpa wash his hands so much? Like oh, it was a thing. <laughs> it was a thing it was back a in the twenty twenties. <laughs> uh, I think we've been so lucky in in vet medicine because. Um, you know, we've been able to continue to go to work and on our patients, um, you know, we've learned are not going to spread the disease to us. Very rarely we can spread it to them. Um, so, you know, we've been able to, to continue going to the office, having our, um, you know, work families and, uh, and as well having all these pets to help um, us get us through whether they're um, our own pets or patients. So we've, we've been really fortunate. We do have the best job. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um <laughs> I love going to the, the uh, I'm in the West End and, and my dog has always been a patient of the, the Brackett Street vet. Yeah. yeah, they're great. And yeah, and we, you know, they're, they're the neighborhood vet. It's across the street from the grocery store, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, you know, I mean, aside, well, we save money for it, so I'm generally prepared for it. I mean, aside from like some crazy emergency. Mm-hmm. Um, and I enjoy going in there and, and they, they know the pets, you know, they, right. yeah, I have that, that, I don't even have a name at the vet. I'm Krusty Pete's dad. They're like, oh right. yeah, how's he doing? <laughs> right. yeah. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, with, with all these people with their new pets, we have identified, be prepared to spend money on them, uh, to keep them healthy. Let's look at good food for them. Let's get them the proper training when they're little so mm. that they have good behaviors when they're older. Yeah. Uh, if you've been working from home, uh, can, uh, work on weaning them off of your presence if you are soon to be going back to work. Mm-hmm. But then anything else in general that you would advice that you would give a, a new pet owner or maybe somebody who got a dog thinking like, you know, because there were a lot of impulse purchases, I'm sure, during the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Um, and people who might be like, oh, man, I I, I, uh, I got in too deep. or I got a 47-inch un- television and a dog. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to use either of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, which, I mean, I mean, I... I if someone is feeling "quote unquote" buyer's remorse mm. about a, a dog, what would you what would you suggest in that case? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen this in a couple of different instances. One, you know, like you said, um, you're looking on Pet Finder and you find this beautiful dog and you adopt it for your family, but then you realize it doesn't fit, or you know, mm-hmm. you knew this dog had some issues, but you. Um, you know, maybe didn't realize the extent and now it's, it's too much for you. Um, you know, those are hard conversations to have, but I, I have admired uh, my clients who have been able to have them with me and, and to realize that n- not every um, situation is the right fit and that's okay. Um, you know, there, there are other options. Um, 
and and we've seen some very successful other options come come to bear so good yeah good is, is that usually like contacting a local adoption agency kind of vibe or I'm, I'm, like not a, to, I'm not trying yeah. not not trying to encourage people to like you know make another impulsive decision and get rid of the pet that they maybe impulsively got but no, but sometimes there's truly, you know, a, a poor fit. It's just, it's not going to work in that situation. I mean, a lot of times, you know, it has to do with the right situation, um, you know, uh-huh. setting it up um, and uh, the time and the training and that sort of thing. But some situations aren't aren't going to work. Um, uh-huh. We were um, just recently working with Old Dogs, New Digs and had a wonderful um, success story with them. Uh-huh. Do tell. Yeah. Do you want to tell them, Robin? <laughs> Okay. Oh, you so, don't have to. No, no, it's fine. Um, so we had an elderly couple come in with um, an older dog, and they just were physically unable to take care of it. And they actually brought him in to euthanize him. Um, mm-hmm. And But Dr. Johnson realized that he was obese and hadn't been able to walk. Like, he literally couldn't walk when they brought him in. And But that, that was his only problem. So she talked to them and they surrendered him to us. They were super happy that we would be able to save him. And um, so we, we got him into rehab and did his physical therapy and he lost weight and he became a happy bouncing around lab again. Wow. And um, then we worked with Old Dogs New Digs and found him um, an owner. And he's in a, with a wonderful family now and he's just having a great life. So, you know, sometimes... It is best to realize that you're not the best home for a pet. Right. And that's so, so I'm, hard I'm glad for you... someone to realize sometimes because, you, you know, you can't imagine this pet with anyone but you. So it right. takes a lot of courage to to trust that. Uh, so I really applaud these people for, for trusting me to, to try to see if we could do something else. Right. And then also just not thinking that... Uh... The, you know, euthanizing the dog is the only option that they can't. Will, will they miss you? Yeah, they're of probably course, like, yeah. like anybody would. But <laughs> yeah. the, but they also are emotionally complex enough to to become acclimated to a new home. Yeah, and you know, I think it's a little bit. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's just like available information at the time. It's whatever Bob Barker said before Price is Right is what most people's <laughs> pet training was in the seventies and eighties. But <laughs> um, that. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to be so self-centered to think that the dog can't live without you. Like, you know, right. okay, yeah. like you know, your ex-girlfriend found somebody else too. So <laughs> they're <laughs> <You know>. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, she's having a great life. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, and you know, I mean, an animal is is a fifteen-year commitment on average, um, but but if it's not a good fit, then then it is time to let somebody else make that commitment. Right. I'm shooting for 22 years. Okay. Oh, that's a great goal. Yeah. I yeah. love it. <laughs> but we've made it past uh, what I was accustomed to growing up. Yeah, you know, 14 like is with, impressive too, for sure. Not bad. Yeah, he's yeah. great. He's great. I love my dog. He's like he's my pal. Yeah. Uh, my fr- he's a friend of my friends. Yeah. Everyone, you know, everyone who knows Pete uh, is a friend of Pete's. Absolutely. <laughs> I love how much too the uh, the emotional depth that a dog has, mm-hmm. which I think a lot of people like to downplay to like oh you just feed them that's why they care about you but it's like it's very clearly more than that mm-hmm. absolutely. For instance, I went uh, to visit uh, a dog that I used to live with many many years ago, and we haven't lived together for. Uh, long time, seven, eight, maybe eight years. And furthermore, I haven't seen her. She's a pug named Lulu. I haven't seen Lulu in really over a year because of the pandemic. And I saw her the other day and she went uh, bananas. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, where have you been? And she was so excited <laughs> to see me and the, it was, the feeling was mutual. Oh, that's but there's, there's so much emotional depth to these critters. They just, yeah. they're, they're so you can see it. I don't know. I'm not, you know. There really is. You're not crazy. <laughs> good, good. I am sitting here holding just a bunch of crystals, and you know. <laughs> um, uh, but they are they are complex and loving 
and happy little creatures that um, I think that people often don't give them enough credit, you know. Mm -hmm. And they have amazing memories, but yet live in the moment, right? So, right. like you said, you hadn't seen her in seven, eight years, but, you know, she still, I would doubt, was pining for you every day. <laughs> but right. then when she sees you, you know, it, it's Well, hold it's on, just... hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she wrote poetry. Yeah, let's not, let's not take Spencer, it off. how I miss thee. Yeah. <laughs> the stack of returned letters that she wrote me. <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, the, I totally, yeah. That's kind of out of sight, out of mind, but also when you're back, everything kind of comes flooding back to them. Oh, and yeah. they're so happy to see you. Absolutely. We have patients who come in once a year mm -hmm. and they come in and they, they know all of us and they're just so happy and they know where the treats are. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's so cute and rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I bought the practice from my predecessor, she used to keep treats in the fridge and I didn't know that. And a lot of the patients were coming in that I hadn't met yet and they kept going to the fridge and going to the fridge. <laughs> and for me, the fridge was vaccines. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yes thank you <laughs> that's great no. that's great well uh any uh hot tips encouragements uh straggler ideas concepts thoughts from your end that we haven't uh, touched on yeah i was uh, thinking about um the socialization period which um often um is, is surprising to owners um, and I'm, balancing that with uh, vaccination status. So a mm -hmm. lot of people come, um, you know, just in terms of getting, getting off on the right foot, come and say, you know, is it okay now if I bring him out to see somebody? And I'm thinking, oh, why didn't you do that, you know, right away? Um, because our vaccines um, that we use for our pets are so effective that we see you know, very little distemper. We see a little parvovirus. We, you know, hardly ever see rabies, although it's still around us in our wild animals. So we have to be careful. But um, as long as we're on a good vaccine schedule, we see a lot more dogs um, surrendered because of behavior issues than because of these, uh, you know, health um, issues. This, yeah, health issues. And so, um, you know, there's a distinct socialization period in both our dogs and cats from about three weeks to 12 weeks when they're just really open to all experiences. Um, and so gently and, 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 you know, in a positive format, exposing them to as much as we can in that period versus, you know, coming to me at four months old and saying, um, you know, I've kept him in since he was eight weeks old. <laughs> oh, you know, the opportunity that was missed there. Um, so, you know, stay on your vaccine schedules, but, but bring your pet, you know, your, your, your cute little one, out with you and get as many experiences as you can in that socialization period. See, I'm glad you brought that up because that's somewhere that that's an area that I I kind of well, I don't want to say I failed in. Uh, I got Pete when he was about six months old, so mm -hmm. you know that much of it was not up to me. Yeah, sure. Um, and then after that, he has always lived at a in a house with a yard with one other dog. That's just always how his life has been. So. He doesn't need to go on a lot of uh, walks and whatnot because he would just, you know, run around the yard. Mm -hmm. um, and my parents have like a spot where he can go, like bananas. But uh, he has an aggression towards other dogs until which point he's introduced. And it really yep. is just that. It's just like Pete, Scott. Scott, he, <laughs> friend, 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 yeah, and then you're yeah. good. Any other yeah. scenario, not good. Like mm -hmm. he kind of, he goes bananas. So I've had to kind of like, you know, it's that was a uh, with the next. He, he, he's 14 now, so I, I'm not like I'm kind of more about making him comfortable and just kind of keeping him out of situations where that's going to be a problem at this point. Mm -hmm. But were I to come into a, a fresh dog, <laughs> yeah. uh, what would you recommend I do to properly socialize so that I can avoid the problems that I have with Pete, who is otherwise yeah. a, a, a beautiful prince? Of course. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do with a new pup, you know, you, usually um, you're getting them from breeders around eight weeks, but uh, maybe from shelters too, Um 
is to just sit in front of, you know, your grocery store um, and have their their regular old kibble with you. And of course, they're going to get lots of attention from people and they'll want to interact with them. So you can say, here, will you give my pet, you know, a treat? And and huh. um, so then they get lots of different kinds of people, not just your friends, you know, <laughs> right. um, and tall and short and everybody in between. So, um, you know, that that gives them all those different experiences all rolled into one. But um, also a lot of, you know, different types of stores will let pets in, especially when they're cute and little. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so tucking them in your pocket, um, you know, I, I do think there's a place for our, our parks, but, um, you know, those are a little bit um, less of a controlled situation. Dog parks I'm talking about um, for yeah. puppies. So I those are, I would wait a little bit on or stay on the periphery, you know. Right. Um, but, would you suggest like take, maybe take them out to like a nightclub or yes, exactly. <laughs> um. a little loud for their ears but <laughs> at a distance outside the club perhaps yeah. across the street or a quiet corner <laughs> booth if you have friends, yeah. that's right if you have friends who have dogs that you know are, are friendly what you don't want to do is expose them to an aggressive dog because that will trigger bad behavior but um okay but yeah, if i may never- <laughs> the dog the first dog that pete lived with was kind of aggressive uh uh-huh. So yeah, that so what you're saying, and I'll and then I'll sit back down is <laughs> that 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 behavior imprints on a young dog as well. They definitely react to it, yes, mm-hmm. um, and they can learn good and bad things from each other. So mm-hmm. you know, be careful mm-hmm. who you who you introduce them to. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll pick up on behaviors you didn't wish they would. Yeah. But yes, if something you know negative happens, then that can greatly color their their outlook as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Pete. Uh, oh, sorry. Was a, Pete affected Cody, as you said, both negatively and positively. Like, a he has a fantastic penmanship, which she's picked <laughs> up, but he's also a compulsive online shopper. Which <laughs> she she also. Hearts over the eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He a little pause. Actually, he does pause over the oh, eyes, nice. which is pretty <laughs> neat. Yeah. So, Jones, what were you going to say? I'm sorry. I was just say so. Uh, one thing. So, uh, yeah, our dog Addie is. She's fantastic but one thing that we were never able to get her to stop doing when she was younger and still to an extent now that she's 11 is she gets so excited when people come home and when she was younger she used to you know kind of jump up on people which you'd never do in any other situation except for Mm -hmm. you know you're home for the first time and we and now she'll sit in front of you she won't even let you walk by she just wants you to pet her before you can even walk by but it's something that we we just never ever well were ever able to to get out of her was the you know, let let a person come in the door. For you. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. But you said she sits in front of you now. She does now. Yeah, yeah. but well, st- still, she aggressively sits in front of you. Like you, you must pet me, even if your arms <laughs> are filled with groceries or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I have the same thing with with my dog Zach, and I have to be honest that I I don't always discourage it because getting a hug when you walk through the door is pretty yes. sweet. Mm-hmm. It is. It that. was a little much though when she when she was younger to have you know <laughs> when she was standing on her hind legs with her paws up on you like so excited. Yeah, that's that's what I've got too. Yeah, like it's kind of you can see it. You can see Cody like winding up for the hug. Now, yeah, now, remembering when they're puppies, you know that they're they're not necessarily going to stay that size. So while it's cute when they're maybe ten pounds, you know when they're eighty pounds, it can be a much different situation. Mm-hmm. So thinking about what what behaviors you want to create when they get older, right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so the, where did we where did we go wrong? What could we have been doing when she was younger to to stop that? Well, if we're talking about like social um, uh, anxiety from um, separation anxiety, I'm sorry, I missed the mm-hmm. word. Um, what we would say is, do not greet your dog when you immediately come in, because mm-hmm. that is making them more aware of when you're gone. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there is the school of thought: come in, put your coat um, in the closet, put your keys down. Um, you know, get yourself a drink, whatever, and then say hi to your pet yeah. um, so that it's not that immediate, um, you know, really big uh, deal that you're home and that you are away mm-hmm. by contrast. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. There also are some really nice, you know, just uh, guiding exercises that you even can do by yourself um, to teach dogs not to jump up. I love to put it... Um, their leash on the opposite side of the door around the knob and close the door. So they're on the side I'm on, but their leash is being held by the doorknob on the other side. Hmm. And then just walk by, especially for little pups. And if they jump up, you just keep walking. And if you walk by and they sit, you say hi, you know, and just doing that over and over again and then changing the 
um, the amount of stimulus for them. So, you know, this time I'm going to run by, this time I'm going to whistle while I go by, you know, until they learn when I sit and you go by, I say hi. Mm -hmm. So your strategy is basically withholding affection. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's harsh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, cause she's like a waspy. She just loves. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Addie's all I will about speak just next to best thing. After right. I get my scotch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like she could be in a room with five people, and the person, the next person that comes to the door, will be the one she's most excited about. <laughs> so it's yeah. not always like separation oh, it's anxiety. Not it's just, just you. Yeah, like, I oh, see. new person. I gotta go say hi yeah. as aggressively as possible. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, remember that. Um, any situation that if you don't want them to respond in that way, if if you will create the situation where they can it, and it, it's self-rewarding, then it's become a habit. So uh-huh. if you know something is happening every time and you don't want it to happen, mm-hmm. you have to create a situation where it can't. Gotcha. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of times we see that, you know, the dogs who, who bark on the edge of their property line mm-hmm. and, um, you know, that's not going to stop um, without some intervention because it's a self-rewarding behavior and you know no one there to stop them so Mm -hmm. when pete uh misbehaves at this point i just make him sit down and watch c-span for an hour (laughs) Um, such a smart boy yeah that usually like (laughs) that usually does a trick (laughs) he's like all right i get it don't want me off the counter uh, make me watch that ever again. I have a my my younger brother armed me with a specific question from him, Ooh. Nice. Uh, which is uh, he has a pit bull, and uh, he keeps breaking out in little pimples here and there, and they keep trying to change his diet, and uh, <laughs> he's just like, why why does my dog keep getting pimples? <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Lots of possible different reasons. Hard to answer, you know, specifically. No, come on now. Ginger, give him a freebie over the air. Come on, I'm trying. Um, <laughs> Puberty. Do we have any more information? Location at all? Um, I, I think last time I was hanging out with him, I noticed one on his side. Uh, on his side. Yeah. And Does he so, also have braces and headgear? <laughs> right? That's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we see puppy acne. They're the kind of same thing. I, Usually it's down around, you know, um, their groin area. Or <laughs> cats will get chin acne, you know, so... <laughs> Yeah. Those things can happen. Wow. Yeah. yeah and sometimes mm-hmm. they grow out of it, or sometimes it's just related to the food bowl they're eating out of. <laughs> but um, on the sides, you know, the first thing that I always think about is is um, external parasite prevention. So is he on a good flea and tick prevention? Whenever wow. we have a, a skin issue. And I also think, is it itchy or not? Um, those can bring us to a lot of different mm-hmm. differentials. Um, he's the um, most chill dog ever. I haven't really seen him doing any uh, aggressive itching or anything. So good. Uh, yeah, but those those flea bites can really uh, oftentimes here. I, listen, I'm a I'm an expert. Uh, <laughs> like dogs, dogs will not sometimes register the discomfort that they're in necessarily immediately. They have a, sometimes have a really high tolerance, and it's not like they're saying. Ah, yeah, I guess some fleas is kind of a problem. They're just they're just sitting there, kind of dealing with it. And I've, where you mentioned the the flea and tick prevention, like we're due for that for our dogs. Now that the weather's getting nice, we have to, you know, we do we do a, like a regular regimen. It's like the ed, the edible thing that repels yeah. all yeah. the things. But uh, yeah, that's it's I'm true. done pretending I'm an expert on dogs. <laughs> Uh, pets can have an allergy to fleas and then one jumps on them and they react, you know, horribly or, you know, they cannot and, and they'll come in and, and we'll find them all over them and the owner, you know, they haven't noticed any itching. Mm-hmm. So you're right. The individual response to fleas and external parasites can be very different. Um, and then I guess I would go to, you know, yeah, diet is one thing they could be allergic to if we are seeing an allergy related skin issue, but, um, you know, dogs can have lots of allergies to things in the environment too. Mm-hmm. So, and there's some really good new um, allergy options for dogs that don't have food allergy, but allergy to, um, you know, pollens, all the things we can have allergies to. Mm-hmm. And and instead of getting the sniffles, they get skin issues. Mm-hmm. Zach, I, I don't mean to call out here, and, and but I have to ask uh, your your brother does have access to. Uh, vet care beyond you having a guest on the show one week, right? <laughs> yes. Chris is a very responsible pet owner. He's not, uh, he's not just 
worries. He's like, <laughs> it, it, has he asked you for any other uh, services to come on as guests? Like, no, hey, but you I think guys are going to get a carpenter good. on there anytime soon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you talking to any uh, tax accountants anytime soon? I've got some issues <laughs> Could you uh, get a dishwasher <laughs> repair person on there sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, yeah, uh, Gilmore, just, he, he gets these random pimples every now and then. And uh, yeah, he. I don't know if, I'm sure he's talked to his vet about it. But yeah. uh, he's also, you know, like he keeps trying to do like little things that they suggest and it's still like little ones show up and he's like, I've changed the diet. I've done this. I've done this. You know, mm-hmm. like, what is the deal? But I guess it could. Skin is, can be one of the most frustrating things. And if, if you know, the regular vet um, is, is being challenged, which I often am, I'm, I'm just a general vet too. Um, you know, we have veterinary dermatologists. A lot of people don't realize that there are uh, veterinary specialists, mm. um, and you know, especially skin and eyes. Uh, those are ones that I'm I'm more than happy to refer to when it's it's too much for me. Mm. You're talking, of course, uh, uh, skin peels and eye jobs at the elective. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, the elective. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, elect- <laughs> the place that we own across the street. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well. I can't think of a better note to go out on than dog pimples. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I saved it for last. Yeah. yeah. And I know that you're a, uh, you know, primarily dealing with pets, but I've had this rash on, oh, no. on my arm. Actually, let's just say the dog had the rash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, let me rephrase that. My dog has a rash <laughs> on his arm. I think right around the elbow-ish area. Yeah, <laughs> just above the tattoo. <laughs> yeah, so the they tattoo. tell us in vet school the only animal that we can't work on is people. But uh, I was mentioning to Zach that you know the one thing that we have done recently, a lot of veterinarians have been able to help give COVID vaccines. So that that's my first experience treating people at all. You, do, you so you've you've uh, done some jabbing. I have. I gave eighteen, and I'm gonna go again next Friday. Right. So we'll see Good how many I do that. Where are you? Yeah. Uh, where are you working? Um, at the expo. Right on. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Happy to help for sure. Yep. I'm glad that they included us in in being able to help. For sure. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, they have not asked Zach and I. That's probably the best. <laughs> yeah, they have not. <laughs> <laughs> we, they said shots and we're down there with like a bottle of tequila. Like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> Look, you guys have to leave immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Well, I'm coming back for my third shot then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've had like, I had like 15, 15 COVID shots. I'm so immune. Not Thank feeling you. anything. Yeah, no, feeling, no symptoms. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Robin, uh, thank you for connecting everybody and getting us together. Yeah, thanks and for free. this opportunity to talk about pet health care. For sure. Yeah, thank Love you so to much for joining us. Yeah. Yes, and Ginger, thank you uh, also for being here. And uh, I know you're super busy, and uh, this is a little little talking podcast show, so we do appreciate you making the time. We sure it's do. our pleasure. Thanks so much for the interest. Of course. Zach, thank yes. you as well, <laughs> just for your constant friendship. Uh, thank you, Spencer, for the same yes. thing. You're w- you're welcome. My pleasure. Test is brought to you by Maine Spirits. Learn more about the spirits to bring into the state of Maine at mainespirits.com and what to do with them by downloading their app for your smartphone or visit them on Instagram at Maine underscore spirits. Promotional consideration provided by State Theater Portland. Learn more at statetheaterportland.com and Sun Tiki Studios. Learn more at suntikistudios.com. <laughs>